Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy J Rock right here. Today I'm gonna be hitting you with a little graphic novel haul. I haven't done a haul in a minute. That's because um a lot of the stuff being released lately is stuff I already have. It's, it's it's a lot of reprints, and that's good for uh you know it shows the hobby's growing, and you got a lot of newcomers that weren't around when this stuff was around, right? A lot of a lot of these books being reprinted have been out of print for a while, hard to find. So it's good that they reprint a lot of their stuff. It's mainly Marvel doing this, they reprint a lot of their stuff uh, for the newcomers, a new audience coming in, and also for people that were already collecting but are now starting to collect in, in a hardcover format or collected format. It's easier than hunting down the tie-ins and all that stuff, right? Or and it's cheaper too than when you're buying um, the singles as they come out, they, they can get pretty expensive. So that's good, but for me, I, I you know, Got some skin in the game, been been collecting for a minute, a few years, so I'm pretty current. Anything that's reprinted, if it's something I want, I probably already have it. So therefore, uh, it's been slowing down my purchases. Also, a lot of stuff I'm buying digitally um, that I don't necessarily need in a physical format. Trying to be more wise with my shelf space, if you will. But lately, this uh, when November came in, they had a lot of sales, uh, you know, your Black Friday stuff for November. Uh, it's not even Black Friday anymore, right? It's all November, Cyber Monday, and all this stuff. It's it's pretty much for the whole month. And what we've been having is um, some pretty good sales on cheap graphic novels and in-stock trades. Those are my two go-to stores. They had some, what is it, Dent and Dash sale, I believe it was called, on cheap graphic novels with some pretty good uh, discounts. And also Inside Trade has some pretty good discounts as well. So I decided, you know what, this is a good time to strike and, and go ahead and buy some stuff. All right, so let's show off the first book. I got this from uh, Cheap Graphic Novels. It's not in the greatest condition. You can see here the dust jacket got some issues right there. I don't know if you could tell there. Look here, there's uh, some dance. This is Captain Britain's Siege of Camelot. The bag, this is an awesome picture right here. I like the bag. See, it has like a... Can you see it there? See, it has some lines. There's some issues. So clearly it's not new. I, I fucked up getting this because, here's the spine, because the material in this, turns out there's an omnibus coming out uh, early next year, gonna have all this material. Usually uh, what omnibuses do is they cover three volumes, being three hardcovers of material into one thick omnibus, right? So I would have volume one, this volume two, and whatever's the next volume. So I was like, fuck, most likely I'm gonna wanna buy that omnibus. So, I was like, I'm gonna just have to get rid of this book. But I decided, you know what? I already bought it so at least I could read it, see how the material is. So, this way it could be like a little test drive. If I don't like this, then I, I save myself the trouble of buying the, the omnibus, right? So, let's get into it a little bit. This is a very old uh, edition. Look back when the Marvel books that were real nice when they had this like fulcrum style and the foil lettering. I used to really dig this. The new ones are cool too, they have a picture now because it's cheaper to make than, than, than giving it this buckram and the foil, all that is more expensive. Uh, either way, I'm, I'm happy with either one because the new style is also nice, it has, you know, pictures printed on it. So let's check this out a little bit. The dust jacket out the way, this is how the old ones used to look, the spine and so forth. Pretty sick. Now, I noticed on this one, a lot of the materials like this in black and white. So it's gonna be on the Omni. I haven't read this stuff before, so it's gonna be completely new to me. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what Captain uh, Britain was like before he went with the Excalibur team. And I like this too. I like, I like a lot of the black and white stuff. I'm a fan. I guess depending on the artist, it has like one issue of uh, Spider-Man in color. Or I guess more than one has a few. That's a good, actually it has a, Good amount, good amount of, look at the gutter loss, it's, it's pretty good. These are just covers, okay, now here we're getting uh, back to the story. So yeah, the, the art looks looks nice. So I'm going to check this out, see how it goes. Now the price, I got this for 15 and normally goes for about 20 so wasn't really much of a discount as far as this book goes. They're normally, I believe, like 42% off. I think this one was 50% off, I want to say. So it was just like 5 bucks from the norm. Whatever. I thought it was like a killer deal when I first got it. Then I realized it was pretty much close to the 
price it normally goes for. All right, let's get to the next book. All right, the next book is uh, this one, Black Sad. I read some, some of the hardcovers. I believe the first hardcover, it covered three stories, then there's two more hardcovers. Uh, and the two of them are about 60, 160 pages, 190 pages, I believe. So they could have both been put together into one hardcover, but they try to milk it and make it three, right? When it really could have been two. So here we got the complete collection in one book. So that's pretty sick. The only thing that sucks is it's, uh, it's not hardcover. I believe there's a hardcover one in, I don't know if it was in Spanish or in German that's out there. I mean, I read Spanish. I don't read uh, German. So if there is, I mean, I might get the hardcover. I don't know. We'll see. But right now I'm happy with this one. It's basically the Omnibus, right? It has a complete collection. And uh, these books, these are from, um, they're European comics. Look at this. They're, they're built differently. Like, see how it's a lot wider? Much like the Judge Dredd ones. If you collect Judge Dredd, you know what I'm talking about. And the comics are wider. So this was pretty jacked. As you could tell, it's a paperback, so they get jacked up more easier than the hardcovers. It's the spine. looks pretty sick. These are really good. I haven't read all of them, but I've read the first hardcover, so it'd be like about half of this book. Solid stuff, man. Uh, 30 bucks. Uh, hopefully, people jumped on it, because at that price for, for the whole series, it was a killer deal, man. It was about... Even at current price, was a great deal, but I believe on in-stock trades, it was about... 17 or 20 i want to say so it was 17 dollars but yeah it's a great price uh right now you know this is raw and uncut guys look at this look at that artwork i'm flipping through these books at the and seeing them for the first time just like you i got these they've been sitting there and then i said you know what let me open them up and let me do a video on them so everything's um as i flip through the pages it's my you know initial reaction so it has these stories um Arctic Nation, 59 pages, Red Soul, on page 117, Silent Hell. So it's uh, Summer Within Shadows, Arctic Nation, Red Soul, that's three, four, five, six, six stories. Yeah, that's about right, because the first hardcover, I believe, had covered three stories. Then the second one covered this one, Silent Hill. Silent Hill and Amarillo were two uh, separate hardcovers. Yeah, look at that artwork right there. Um, see what they show covers for each. Um, I'm a big fan of covers. It's a big. You know, I'll, I'll look through that later. I don't want to do it right now in the on camera, but it's a big deal to me when they don't have uh the covers when one issue ends and another starts. It's a buzz kill, man. Like, but yeah, look at this artwork and the stories are good. Uh, I've been starting to try to collect some European comics. Like I said, I'm current on the superhero stuff I want. And I want to get other stuff, um, especially like try to read, you know, maybe some manga and some stuff from other countries just to see what the difference in the storytelling is, how they tell stories. If if there's any, which there will be because, you know, uh, we have cultural difference and so forth. I mean, this manga, for example, is, is a lot of it is stuff I don't think they'd be able to do here or, or it wouldn't sell. Okay, we've seen enough pages here. Uh, look at the artwork right here. This, this story is a good story. Um... So yeah, oh, this one I've been wanting for a minute. Glad I held off on it. I kept thinking, you know, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait till I get a good price. And it popped up on Cheap Graphic Novels. All these I've shown you so far from Cheap Graphic Novels under 10 and Dash sale. This was, I believe, 40 bucks. I mean, for Infinity Crisis. And this is a $150 cover price book. So it was like 70% off. This is the cover. I like the other cover better, but I mean the cover is not that huge a, a deal. They're they're both good covers. The spine. So you see how freaking thick this book is. And look at this. This, this is where the damage was at. No, you could tell right there. So so there's some damage there. We'll take the dust jacket off right now. See how it looks. This is the back. But yeah, it's a it's a lot of material for forty bucks. You can't go wrong with that. The book itself was still sealed. Like some of these were not sealed. This one, for the first two I showed, were not uh, sealed. This one was sealed. Oh, and here we still get the OG cover, so cool. Cool, man. Uh, let's see this. You see right here? Can you tell on the dust jacket there where the, where the damages are right there? What's this over here? I guess these are the... Oh, no, these are different stories. Okay, so, yeah, this still has the same cover. Sick. Has the minor damage here. 
not too big a deal. The bag, I don't even remember what the original one, what uh, what covers it had, if it was these or different ones. But yeah, it's pretty much brand new. It just has some minor damage, so I could tell because the binding is really tight right now, so I know it's new. Also, it was sealed, so I know. I never read this story. I want to read it, so I want to get the book. We'll search the spine later, but there you go, man. It, this one is, uh, I'm not in a hurry to read it, but I am excited to have it already. Have it in the collection. Um, I had it before, but it started creeping up in price. And at the price I was going for, I, I couldn't justify keeping it, you know. Um, I was like, you know what, at that price, I'm just going to sell it. And, you know, lucky I got it back for, for a good price. Because I was looking to make, um, been making shelf space, like I said. So I'm always looking for, once it starts getting to pure books, I don't want to get rid of I have to start nitpicking and, and when one goes up, I go up as I see I need to put that one up for some next space, right? So yeah, um, get through some of these pages. Yeah, it looks um, looks like a solid read. I hear good things about this. Can't wait to uh, check it out. All right, this is next book is from Instock Trades. Um, this is Cole, The Barbarian. I think it's called Savage, Savage Cole. Now, this is very similar to the Conan stuff, right? I'm collecting the Conan books. And these omnibuses uh, have a very similar look to them. The design down to the spine and so forth. The artwork and the stories look similar. I have not read them, but it's a lot of fantasy, sword and sorcery stuff, just like Conan. They said I don't need both if I'm going to have all the Conan stuff, right? So I skipped on this one. They go for about 75 bucks. But uh, it was on sale for 40 so at 40 I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pick it up at that price. The Conan ones, the difference here is that this is stone washed, and the Conan spines are more like a light tan uh, hue. Here I have one, for example. This is a slightly different color. Now this coal is a thousand pages. This Conan is eight hundred. So to me, this is a, a great size for a Marvel omnibus. And between this, this being the thickest, and this being, you know, in between these sizes, I feel it's good. Now the new Conan uh, volume six is coming out. It's gonna be a lot thinner than this, and the price is gonna be the same. So that sucks. Um, it's because it's getting down to the last few volumes of Conan the Barbarian. So, you know, now they're really trying to price gouge us and, and really get us, man. I thought this is a perfect size. And I know they, they talk about the Conan tax and so forth. I, I know there's a licensing fee for that stuff. But how come all these other ones were so much cheaper, right? And they still have like, the same licensing, right? Oh, paper's getting expensive. I've been hearing those talks. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about that because... I don't buy that at all. If the paper's so expensive and this and that, why is uh Dark Horse giving you uh books for thirty bucks? Uh and the paper's better and they're bigger and they're still hardcover, and then Marvel's giving you books for the same amount of content for like hundred twenty five, right? Uh I guess they're only charging Marvel more for the paper and not Dark Horse. Yeah, so I was like, come on now, like these excuses for Marvel, um if this stuff was true, the prices would have gone up on all books across the board, right? So it's not about the paper going up in price and this and that. It's about Marvel's just a greedy company. And um, it's fine, you know, uh, that's business. Uh, it's to make the whole point of business to make money, right? So I ain't mad at them, you know, they're getting their hustle on. They're, they're uh, doing what they got to do, right? Because I remember when Dark Horse had the license, they didn't charge that much for the Conan Omnibuses. And they had thicker paper. And uh, then the Epic Collections of Conan for Marvel. And they were charging $29. Marvel's charging $49 for the same amount of content, right? So so there was clearly something wrong there. And, and you could say, oh, because this price hadn't gone up yet. But then why does Dark Horse and their new current stuff, is, uh, the price hasn't gone up, and yet they still give you a lot of pay, uh, pages, right? So it's, it's not that. I even seen a thing where Marvel said, um, they, they asked them about that. And I interview, and they said it's not about the physical quality of the book. We're not selling you the book. We're selling you the characters, and our characters are worth more than other companies' characters, right? Okay, I get that. But then why are you selling Conan for more than other companies do, right? So so it's just just the, the company rules in general. Okay, enough of a rant about that. Here we get the table of contents to the book itself. Some of the bonus material, I like this when they have letters pages and bonus material. That's what you buy these big books for. These big premium books is for the extras. So I enjoy that. 
I mean, look at Cole, uh, Cole right there, showing his sexy legs, you know, for that female gaze, you know, uh, get the female audience in there, walking around in his skimpy little outfit. Come on, Cole, come on, you gotta do better. It's a sword and sorcery, so it's gonna be a lot of scandally dressed women and men that are ripped and now uh, running around in underwear. So you're offended by that kind of stuff. You're not gonna like these books. I'm telling you that right now. I might want to skip it. Um, but for me personally, uh, I don't read them for the way they're dressed. I read them for the stories. That story for another day. Uh, right now the look at right here. You got the dark things and stuff. I really like this panel right here. It's pretty sick. Let's see what else we got. Let's get one more page. That's pretty cool right here. This has a very horror vibe on that panel right there. So yeah, I'm only familiar with Cole, my name, that's it. Never read any, not even one single issue of his. So we'll see how he differs from Conan. All right, the next book is also from In Stock Trades. This one's called Nocturnals, this Omnibus. It has a wicked cover, going in completely blind. I'm not familiar with these characters at all, but I like the cover, like the artwork. Because the price is right, I mean, Dark Horse gives you a great bang for your buck. This book is... $29.99, $30. This Marvel book is $40. Look how much smaller it is. And it's a paperback. This one's hardcover. And look how much thicker. How much more pages. They're actually both around 300 pages. This is, I think, 400, 380, something like that. And this is around 300. So look how much bigger it is. Here it says Volume 1 Omnibus. The back of it. Compared to the, you know, the Marvel one. So you see what I'm talking about as far as the prices, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so it is what it is. Um, one thing I don't like is having a lot of books on my shelf. That's why I like to buy the omnibuses. But uh, like I was talking about the Conan one, they're, they're doing two things with the Savage Sword. They're making a one, the Savage Sword of Conan omnibuses are gonna go up to 150, but they're gonna stay the same size. So I like that, that way we don't have a million uh, books, right? And the Barbarian are going to like six, they're going to be about as thick as this book. And uh, they're going to stay the same price, but they're going to have way less pages. So they could try to milk it and make more out of the last few issues that are left. I would have rather they kept them the same size and just charged a little more. I would have kept buying them uh, that way because uh, I don't want to have more books to put on the shelf, right? If they would have done it, knocked it out in two or three as opposed to five more, I would have rather done that. So anyways, let's get to the inside of this book. All right, so let's check out some of the interiors. Look at this, it's pretty cool. It has a drawing here of this big skeleton and this like Dracula looking guy. The pages on these are really thick on these, the Dark Horse um, library editions, which is fine. I think I think they probably think like, oh, they're hooking us up with this thick paper, which they kind of are. My issue with this though is uh, with its own binding, I don't know how it's going to fold up with this heavy paper over time or over multiple reads. As opposed to when it's light paper, it, uh, I'm more confident it holds up longer. But yeah, here as you can see, there's glare because of the, I read above this light here. And with this thick paper, you can never see through the other side because it's uh, very sturdy. When it's on thinner paper, you can see through the artwork to the other side. Uh, I know that's a big deal for some. For me, not as big a deal. Uh, I don't really mind when I could see through it. Doesn't really affect me too much. I, I'm more annoyed by that glare in general than that. But uh, yeah, the paper here is uh, very sturdy, like I said. This glossy paper, I personally like more the matte finish type paper because it, it feels more like the original comic books. But also, I don't get that glare, right, from the lights and stuff from my reading spot. Yeah, the, the artwork looks solid. It's a crazy painting style. I uh, can't wait to dig into this one. Actually, I could wait because it's not going to be in my immediate to read list, but it is something I've been wanting to check out since I heard it be announced. So hopefully it's good, man. All right, so this is the last book of the haul. We're getting close to the end, y'all. This is a Wonderland Omnibus Volume 1. I believe there was never no other Omnibuses released. Not sure if it just didn't sell or what, but I love Alice in Wonderland. Not necessarily this series, but I'm talking about just Alice in Wonderland in general, the character. Love the movie. It's probably my, um, it's probably right up there with Aladdin for me as my two favorite, uh, Disney movies. Love the growing up, the whole trip, she eats mushrooms, 
goes to Wonderland, uh, you know, like a whole psychedelic trip with the cat and, and all that crazy stuff, right? Um, so I decided I want to read these, um, the Grim Fairy Tales universe. It's very underrated, very, very. People, when mention uh, shared universes, they talk Marvel, DC, and then sometimes they uh, include Valiant. But this would be the fourth. This would be uh, Grim Fairy Tales. Uh, they're all stories very, um, they're based on fables, but not really. Only the characters from uh, old stories you hear. But they give it a horror twist. They're very, uh, like I said, Grim Fairy Tales. They got a horror twist. All the women are heroic. They're like action heroes, right? Like superheroes. Uh, what hurts it in a way, I believe, is, is the covers because they use J. Scott Campbell for a lot of these covers. So people see these covers and they write them off. At least that's what I think, right? I feel like they see that. They, they picture one thing because that's what I did. I was like, oh, it's not something I'm going to like. But then I read some of them and they're pretty cool. They're just superhero comics, right? With a little bit of a horror twist. So I think people should give it a shot. This one is that a print has been gone for a while. I think so. It's volume one. This is the Alice one. But then there's two, uh, volume one and two of the Grim Fairy Tales, which are with uh, Snow White, I believe. These ones are with Alice, right? Um, so yeah, I think the volume one of the other ones also had a print. This is the spine. I'm very impressed with the way this, I bought this used off eBay. I'm very impressed with the way the spine held up. Because I had some of the other ones, and they got a crease in the middle. This one did not. If you're wondering about the dimensions, think um, Osalgo Jimbo, the trade paperbacks. Uh, this is the same size as those, except these are in color. Okay, so this is the back. These are the, the books you would be getting included in here. This is some of the artwork you're going to get inside. I mean, look at that monster. It's pretty cool. The artwork, to me, Marvel DC usually got the best artist. Sometimes a good artist will go to some other company for, for a series, but a lot of time, uh, the art for me is it's not the same. It's lacking. There will be pages where you get some uh, cheesecake, right? But it's not as much as I thought. For the most part, it does a good job. Um, it is there. I mean, look at that panel right there, right? So you do get some uh, couturist, uh, not necessarily nudity, but some, uh, you know, skimpy outfits sometimes. It's, it's not really the outfits that's a, that's a problem. It's uh, once in a while, maybe every 80 pages or so, you'll get a panel where it's, it's borderline offensive, I mean, even to me, and then I'm not that easily offended. Even to me, sometimes I'm like, wow, that's, you know, I roll my eyes and I'm like, that was doing too much. Uh, I want to look for one here, but, but anyways, you, you get my gist, right? Like, it, it does have a little bit of that, but not that much. For the most part, they're good stories. Uh, don't let a panel here and there uh, uh, ruin the experience or, or, or make you write off the book, right? Give it a chance, read a trade or two, and, and see how you like it. For the most part, they're like this. They're uh, murder mysteries and uh, folk tales and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think I'm going to stop right here. I, I Look at this page. Damn, brutal. Look what the hell happened here. Blood everywhere. So, yeah, guys, um, I'm going to finish collecting the Alice in Wonderland. I'm not sure if I'll collect the rest because it's quite a lot of stuff. But uh, I do want the Alice ones because, I, uh, like I said, I am a fan of that character. And, and I hope they're good. I hope I'm not disappointed because I read some of the main series with um with snow white and they're pretty good in the in the snow white universe it's basically she's a knight and, you know um it's like a not necessarily red sonia but she's fighting the witch and sorcerers so it has that sword and sorcery to it and this one has more of a there's like a different tone because i mean the one i mean see what i'm talking about you do get panels like this once in a while that are a little bit of a you could call it a head turner or you could call it uh you roll your eyes right it depends on if you like that stuff or not. Me, personally, I'm, I don't really like that in my comics when it's too try-hard. I hate when something tries too hard because then it comes off cheesy and forced. And it can take you off of the story a little bit. But yeah, like I said, it doesn't happen too often. For the most part, uh, I think they're well done. But yeah, guys, uh, hopefully you like this haul. Uh, if you bought any of these books or you read any of them, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And uh, hopefully you hit that like button. Other than that... I'll just check you guys out next time.